The last head and arm choke we broke down was done with the legs, known as the triangle choke. And this video is breaking down the same type of head and arm choke, only this time we're looking at the upper body, applying the pressure to complete the choke. Again, I feel like I have to say this every time, this is not an instructional for the perfect head and arm choke. This is simply what's happening biomechanically and anatomically during a choke like this. The first structures we need to familiarize ourselves with with any choke is the carotid arteries. Now the common carotid arteries have different origins. The left common carotid artery is a branch from the aortic arch, which gets its blood directly from the heart. The right common carotid artery's origin is the brachiocephalic trunk off of the aortic arch. Now both of these common carotid arteries bifurcate into two separate external and internal carotid arteries. Knowing this is important because right at the bifurcation of these two arteries sits the carotid bodies and baroreceptors that detect changes in pressure. These structures are ultimately what start the cascade of signals to our brains that lead to the loss of consciousness. We also have the trachea that sits in the front of our neck and this is the major airway of the lower respiratory system. You'll see a little bit later how this comes into play. Now that we know the vascular and the respiratory anatomy, let's identify how the person doing the choking is actually occluding the blood flow. On the side of the neck that's opposite of the arm that's in, the person doing Doing the choking is performing a movement called horizontal adduction at the shoulder, and they're often using the ground to assist with the movement. The muscle belly of the bicep is a structure providing the pressure to the cervical spine. Now as the arm moves further into horizontal adduction on the other side of the neck, the person doing the choking is performing a movement called cervical side bending, performed by muscles like the sternocleidomastoid or the scalenes in order to keep the pressure of the shoulder on the neck. For the person being choked, this is bringing the big muscle belly of the anterior delt into the cervical spine in an attempt to occlude the other carotid artery. Now sometimes you'll see people using cervical side bending coupled with extension or flexion, but the main movement providing the pressure here is cervical side bending. And if this hasn't quite achieved the tightness required to achieve the tap, the person doing the choking seems to use this movement quite a bit. Along with getting their hips higher and letting gravity assist them in getting pressure on the front of the neck, you'll often see them perform a movement at the shoulder called protraction, performed predominantly by a muscle called the serratus anterior. Now this is technically a combination of a couple scapular movements, but essentially it involves bringing the shoulder blade forward, placing even more pressure on the front of the cervical spine, intending to disallow airflow through the trachea. So to recap, one carotid artery is being occluded by the muscle belly of the opponent's bicep while moving their shoulder into horizontal adduction. The other occluding force to the opposite carotid artery is with cervical side bending using the scalenes and the sternocleidomastoid to bring the opponent's anterior delt muscle belly into the neck. And as a cherry on top, one could use shoulder protraction onto the anterior portion of the cervical spine in an attempt to prevent airflow through the trachea and hopefully completing the submission. So let me know in the comments what other movements you'd like to see me break down like this. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.